So the October, November 2017 paper. I'm going to read all these questions really carefully. Use a diagram to show the effect on the equilibrium price and quantity of raincoats in Western Cape if they have a good rainy season. Remember to label your diagram. All right, so normal supply and demand graph. Now, obviously, if there is rain and people need raincoats, What's going to happen? The demand for raincoats will increase, pushing up the price and quantity traded. Um, all right, so in this question, they didn't leave any space for you to write anything, but uh, I would probably just mention obviously price increases and quantity uh, traded increases due to the demand increase. All right, exogenous factor, so we shift the demand curve to the right. Okay. Question two. And don't forget to label all of your curves and also put in these arrows to show which way it's actually shifting. Right. Use the diagram below to show the effect on the equilibrium price and quantity of meat if the main cattle farming area of the country experiences a severe drought. Okay. So I would assume that if there is a drought, cattle farming would decrease. So we shift the supply curve to the left, decreasing the quantity traded and increasing the price. Given the above scenario, explain the adjustment process and the new equilibrium position all right so <clears throat> you can start by saying that the drought is obviously exogenous it's an exogenous factor therefore the impact is a shift of the supply curve. Right, it's obviously a negative impact, so the supply curve shifts to the left. What will happen to the price and quantity? A de decrease in supply increases the price of the product and it also decreases the quantity traded. Now you've got to explain what happens to the demand as well. Okay, so obviously the demand curve didn't um, shift, but what happens when we move to our new point of equilibrium? We move upwards and along the demand curve. So what do we know? A movement up and upwards and along the demand curve is a change in quantity demanded. Right? But that occurs only after the price has increased because of the supply decrease. Does that make sense? So because supply decreases, there will be a decrease... in the quantity demanded. Now why do we say quantity demanded? Because we move along the demand curve. All right. Decrease in the quantity demanded as price increases. And then you can say shown by movement along the demand curve. Whenever you are explaining a change to a graph, there's a couple of things that you need to remember. 
So obviously we're only shifting the supply curve. It's one movement, but it causes a lot of changes. You need to mention both the y-axis variable change and the x-axis variable change, as long as the as well as the change along the other curve. All right, so three things you always need to include. <clears throat> Question three. In the market for newspapers, two events occur simultaneously. So again, simultaneously, you know you're going to shift the supply and demand curve. First, Bafana Bafana wins the African Cup. Everybody wants to read more about it in the paper. So read more about it in the paper. Demand is going to increase. Secondly, the paper on which it is printed is more expensive. What is that? A supply side factor, factors of production, means the supply decreases. The effect is of Bafana winning is larger than the effect of the increase in cost of paper. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the demand curve is going to shift by more than the supply curve. Right. Draw a graph on the market for newspapers and show all the changes. All right. So when you draw this, obviously start with your normal one. All right. Always start with a smaller change. Okay. So in this case, it's supply. So just move your supply curve slightly, make it quite small. Draw in the impact. the arrows and then go way overboard with the other one so that the examiner can clearly see which way you know the curve is moving all right it also makes it easier because if you put them too close together then your, your variables are too close together here and it just gets messy all right Okay. Right. Question four. Explain with the aid of a diagram the impact of the imposition of an effective effective maximum price. Effective means it does affect or affect the market. Okay. In the market for product A. So you've got product A, you've got your supply and demand curve. Now in this, in the two exams that we've done here, May and, May and October, the examiners have been quite lazy, you can see that. They've just repeated the supply and demand curve. I obviously did say you need to focus on, what's it, unit four and five with the demands and supply and changes, but you guys cannot just ignore the rest, okay, because if they're not so lazy in your paper, then they'll throw in a lot of other stuff, labor markets, all sorts of things, okay, so you still need to revise the rest of it. Now, an effective maximum price, where would that be? Above or below the equilibrium? Below the equilibrium, right? So, P max needs to be set below. Now, what will that do? Look where we intersect the supply curve. And you can call it QS. That's the quantity supplied. And look where we intersect the demand curve. You can call it QD. That's the quantity demanded at the new maximum price. Okay. Explain the impact of the imposition, okay? So you can say, in order to be effective, Pmax must be set below the equilibrium. All right. This causes excess demand of product A. What is the excess demand? How much is the excess demand? You have to mention that. Excess demand is equal to QD minus QS. All right. Because you want to show the examiner that it is that distance. Right.
this moves the economy to a point of disequilibrium. Okay. Remember when we shift the demand curve or we shift the supply curve, we, we move to a new equilibrium point. But when we change price and we move along the curves, it is a disequilibrium. All right. If they asked you something like what would happen in this graph after a certain period of time, which they might do, you've got to say that it would return to the equilibrium point. There would be upward pressure on prices, okay, and the economy would return to the equilibrium point. Okay. Suppose that you are the owner of a shop and you establish the price elasticity is 0 0.5. At what price will your total revenue be the highest? Okay. If your price elasticity or demand for your product is less than 1, it means that your quantity demanded changes by less than your price changes. So in order to increase your total revenue, you can increase your price because your quantity demanded will decrease but by less than price. So overall this will increase and therefore <clears throat> total revenue will increase. Okay. So what do you think is the answer here then? At 8 Rand or 10 Rand? 10 Rand, exactly. Okay. So if EP equals 0 0.5, it is inelastic. Okay. Therefore, um, to increase revenue, you should increase the price of your products. Quantity demanded will decrease by less than the increase in price. And it will increase total revenue. Therefore, total revenue is higher at 10 rand. Suppose the cross <clears throat> elasticity of demand for product A and B is negative 0 0.25. What type of goods are they based on this cross price elasticity? Okay. So it's a negative. Basically what they're saying is if the price of A increases, obviously the quantity demanded of A is going to decrease. And in this case, the demand for B is going to decrease. Okay. Why? Because there's a negative cross price elasticity and you can see Quantity B moves in the opposite direction from the change in price of A. Okay. That gives us the negative 0 0.25. And what else do we see? It means the quantities move in the same direction. So therefore these products are complements. Okay, you can't just do that in your exam. You're going to have to explain it in more words than I've done so there, but you understand what you need to do. Right. Any questions on the long questions? Right, economics <clears throat> is the study of choice due to scarcity under conditions of scarcity yeah number two 
on the following PPC curve, Utopia is currently at PPC curve 1. So that's the outer one. Then point which one will be efficient and point which one will be unattainable. So your unattainable points. Efficient is point D. Unattainable is point C. Okay. If Utopia is producing at point D and it decides to increase production of honey to 65, what is the opportunity cost? Currently producing at point D, so we've got 55 honey and we've got 1,800 milk. We're going to increase our production of honey. We're going to move downwards and along the PPC curve to 65, which means we're going to have to decrease the production of milk by 1,800 minus 1,050. 750 liters of milk. You guys all understand that. We have to give up 750 liters of milk in order to produce more honey. What is the possible reason for the shift in the PPC curve from 1 to 2? So what's happened here is the PPC curve has actually shifted inwards. Okay. What does that mean? It means that there is a decrease, decrease in the production capacity. All right. So... Mass emigration of workers out of Utopia. Immigration is when they are entering the country. Immigration is when they're leaving. Which of the following is a normative statement? Normative is opinion. NASA should send whatever. As soon as you see the word should, you know it's an opinion. Which of the following countries is an example of a command economy? <clears throat> North Korea. <clears throat> in what type of economy will you see consumers buying what they like with the money they have acquired from a wage or a salary? Market and mixed. Three major flows in the economy. Which one creates an income for consumers? So think about your circular flow. Production, income spending which one creates an income when they sell their factors of production to produce goods and services they earn an income when you sell your capital on the factor market what type of remuneration do you receive land earns rent labor earns wages capital earns interest and entrepreneurship earns profits. What do the arrows A and B represent? This would be income earned on the factor market to households. And this would be the physical factors of production that they are selling on the factor market. Which one of the following statements is correct regarding the goods market and the factor market? Factors of production flow via the factor market to firms. If five companies are supplying bolts and one company closes down, what will happen to the market for bolts? There will be a decrease in supply. Supplies decrease, the supply of bolts and screws will decrease. What caused the equilibrium to change from E1 to E2? Here's E1, here's E2. Obviously, there was an increase in supply, not quantity supplied, increase in supply because we've shifted the curve. It would be a change in supply followed by a change in quantity demanded. We moved along the demand curve. So it's a change in quantity demanded. What area on the graph represents consumer surplus? area below the demand curve and above the price line so it is p1 e pm fifteen a dairy farmer produces fat-free milk can sell cream that was extracted to make the milk 
fat-free milk and cream are therefore joint products. After an article explaining the health benefits of fat-free milk has been published, the demand for fat-free milk increases. What will happen to the equilibrium price and quantity of cream? Okay. So the demand for fat-free milk increases. All right, quantity traded increases. It means that the quantity supplied increases. Okay. And a byproduct of the milk is the cream. So the supply of cream increases. So we're going to shift the supply curve for cream because the price of cream didn't change initially. So when you shift the supply curve to the right, what happens? Quantity traded increases, but the price decreases. Okay. So equilibrium price will decrease and the quantity will increase. All right. Susie sells cakes at a student center. She knows that if she raises the price of cakes, she will sell fewer cakes. If she drops the price, she'll sell more. She studies economics and calculates that the cakes are relatively elastic in demand. What can she do? So if it is elastic, it means quantity demanded changes by more than price. She needs to decrease the price. And the quantity demanded will increase by more than the price decrease. And total revenue will increase overall. Which one of the following is a synonym for the word utility? Satisfaction. Right, cold drinks and burgers. You've got your total utility, marginal and weighted. When will the law of diminishing marginal utility for cold drinks set in? Here's your cold drinks, here's your marginal utility from the second cold drink. Cold drink costs 10 rand, burgers 25, budget of 95. Okay, what can you afford and not afford? So pretty simply, all you had to do was multiply all of these figures by their selling price. And because it's asking you which one she cannot afford, and the first one you go for is obviously just the biggest one. That's Chances are the one that she's not going to be able to afford. So 3 times 10 plus 4 times 25. 4 times 25 is 100, 3 times 10 is 30, so that's 130, which is obviously greater than 95, so that's the one that she cannot afford. Which combinations will she be able to afford? Again, you just add them all together, 2 times 10 plus 3 times 25 is 20 plus 75 is 95, that's obviously what she's got. That is what you can afford. Ben makes us, sells it to restaurants. <clears throat> One person working for him. There is a heat wave and the demand for us increases. He does not have the means to buy another freezer and only employs two more people. What will be considered the long run for Ben? It is when the labor and capital are, vari are variable. In this case, the only thing that is varied is labor. He's kept capital the same. He's kept his delivery vehicle the same. So as soon as he purchases a delivery vehicle, or sorry, freezer, then it will be the long run. Right. Got your job. You earned eight thousand. Started a new business. Expenses of fifteen thousand, and you made a total revenue of thirteen thousand. Your total revenue is thirteen thousand. Your expenses were fifteen thousand. Have you made a profit or loss? A loss. Which one is not true about the law of diminishing marginal returns? Remember, law of diminishing marginal returns, your capital is fixed. You vary your labor. As you add more labor, your output increases, but with less and less each time. Okay. Which one is not true? <clears throat> Number four, 
When you employ more people, you do not always increase the total product. Remember, marginal product can be zero and it can also be negative. So you can actually start to decrease from your total product if you keep adding more laborers to a fixed amount of capital. Right, a baker bakes a thousand loaves of bread per day for an average cost of two rand a loaf. What is average cost? Total cost divided by quantity. Okay. If his total fixed cost is one thousand per day, what is his total cost? So total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. So it's one thousand plus total variable cost. We need to multiply the one thousand by the two rand because that is your average cost okay all right twenty five in a perfectly competitive market there are many buyers and sellers so that no single firm can influence the market price meaning that firms in a perfectly competitive market are price takers, not price setters. So you know it is option one already. Monopolist is a price maker. Total fixed cost of 10,000. Total variable cost, 8,000. Total revenue, 11,000. What should the firm do in the short run? Remember, the shutdown rule is only if your price is less than your variable cost. And we can see here that price is obviously greater than our variable cost. Therefore, we should continue to produce temporarily. Okay. What is the price elasticity of demand of a single firm in a perfectly competitive market? Remember, the demand curve for a single firm in perfectly competitive market is horizontal, which is perfectly elastic. Twenty-eight. Figure below shows the short-run conditions of a firm in a perfectly competitive market. The firm is making what? Obviously, your average cost is above... Your selling price in this case, you know you are making an economic loss. How much? 1,200 multiplied by 13 minus 10, 3,600. All right. Number 29. In the long run, okay, so they're obviously talking about this market situation. If you're making an economic loss in the long run adjustment, existing firms will exit the industry so that the market supply curve will shift to the left. There will be a decrease in supply. Market price will rise. What will happen? In the long run, as firms exit the industry, your market price will start to rise until such time as you are earning zero economic profit. Okay. In the market for fish, there are four suppliers. If the price is 50 bucks, John produces 120. Snook Kings produce will not produce anything. The boat will produce 356. And sardine runners produce 54. What is the market supply at 50 Rand? It equals 530. Thirty one. Nominal wage twenty five thousand, salary increase of two thousand, but the inflation rate is nine percent. Is there an increase in your real wage or not? To calculate it, 
what is the percentage increase in your nominal wage? 2,000 divided by the 25,000 times 100 gives you 8% increase in your nominal wage, but there is a 9% increase in inflation. So yes, you do receive an increase in your nominal wage, but you have a decrease in your real wage. Okay. Which factors will make the labor market less competitive? You need to know your assumptions of a perfectly competitive labor market. Heterogeneous labor will make it less competitive. The assumptions of a perfectly competitive labor market is homogeneous products in the goods market and homogeneous labor in the labor market. All right. So remember your assumptions for both goods and labor market. Trade unions employ various strategies to increase wage rates. Which of the following options will not tend to be accompanied by lower employment? So which of the following will increase? Okay, so which of the following will not lower employment or which of the following will not increase unemployment? It is number three. Work with firms to increase the demand for the product in a particular industry. Okay. If the government wants to set a minimum wage, but it is not sure at which rate to set it at, which of the following would be effective? Okay, minimum wage needs to be set above the equilibrium. The only one above the equilibrium is W4. And which of the following is true? If the government does set this minimum wage above the equilibrium, we know that there will be an excess supply of labor. Okay. 